In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at display settings. Now, display settings are located under settings and display settings. And here is the uh, layers tab. That's the very first tab that opens up. And in the layers tab, what we can do here is we can change what you see on your screen. So, if we want to, we'll just do cabinets here, base, and we see we've got a visible check mark up here. I can uncheck that and make all the base cabinets invisible. I can leave it checked. I can change the outline color. Say we want the outline color to be pink. <clears throat> change the fill color. Change the outline style. And this is the actual outline of the cabinet. So let's slide this over. This is the outline of the cabinet that we're talking about. This is the little line on the sides around our cabinet. So we can change the style of that. You can change it thickness by pixel. Um, we can change the labels and the text in the labels as far as the font and the size. We can also choose to display labels with dimension, display labels with no dimension, display label with bill of material number. That gives you a nice little list. Um, gives you the, the uh, label, in this case wall 3030. And then it also has a number behind it that indicates what number item that is on your bill of materials. Um, do not display label. That one's great. <clears throat> if you know that you uh, are going to be shopped, you can, you can print this off with no labels displayed. Makes it a little more difficult for the other guy to just take your layout and, and give you a quick price off of it. And you can display bill of materials number without labels. And if you do that, then the actual cabinet label is gone and you just have a bill of material number. Um, display label, no dimension, that's where it's set as default. I'm going to leave that. And I'm just going to click OK real quick here. And you can see how those changes took effect. I have red lines outlining my cabinet now. And <clears throat> all the base cabinets are colored yellow. So back to display settings and cabinets and base. We'll change these back to the way they were. And I'm going to make my cabinets invisible this time, my base cabinets. <clears throat> and so here, see, all the base cabinets are missing. This comes in really handy um, if you need to, say, just show the wall cabinets. Because you can go in, you can eliminate the crown moldings and the countertops and all the stuff from display settings. And once you eliminate all those things, you're left with just a file out here that may only have countertops in it. Or it may just be base cabinets, may just be wall cabinets, may just be appliances. Um, those can be kind of handy for handing out to your contractor, homeowner, installer, whatever, and they can work off of those. Sometimes it's real handy to have just your uh, wall cabinets or just your base cabinets, um, especially if it's a real complicated design. <clears throat> and you can come down through here and do this with everything. Appliances, you can turn those on and off. Moldings, top moldings, light moldings, toe kick moldings, all those can be, can be set up to show or not. Measurements tab. Lots of information in this tab as well. User dimensions, those are the dimensions that you actually go up and place yourself. You know, you come down here and use one of your dimension tabs. <clears throat> um, you can change your nomenclature orientation into any of those settings. Cabinets, default dimensions, what do you want it to um, dimension is what it's asking here. Here we've got base wall and tall all receiving dimensions, but you could do center lines as well on those or turn some of them off if necessary. Countertops and trims, if you've taken your layers section and changed it so just your countertops are showing, you may want to um, add the countertops here for measurements. I'll give you measurements all the way around it. Um, same thing with molding, backsplashes, user shapes. Give you all the dimensions on those if you want. <clears throat> You can also tell it what to dimension as far as appliances, room elements, that'd be doors and windows, um, closets, you can choose center lines, um, display center line and symbol, that gives you a little uh, CL symbol for your center line, 
Um, break dimension line for inserting dimension. You notice here that our dimension is, is on top of the line. If you choose this guy here, it will break that line and move that dimension down so it's in line with that. Just, just a little something to make it a little bit different than everybody else's. You can change your line colors and your line thicknesses and your font color. The line thickness is there. And you can change your font and style size as well. <clears throat> you can also change whether you want a slash or an arrow or a dot. We would be slash, slash. This could be arrow or dot as well. So lots of options in your measurements. You can customize it just to the way you prefer it. Selection and grid tab. Um, here we're looking at our selections and our grids. We can change the grid size. Maybe we don't want a 12 inch grid. Maybe you want a two foot grid. We can go ahead and do that. Um, <clears throat> lines and colors. You change the line thickness out here. Right now it's set at one pixel thickness, but you can change that to make them thicker or thinner. Well, not thinner, but thicker anyways. You can change the line color and you can change the background color. We can also change the color of a selection. This is once you click on something, you notice it turns red. We can change that to turn to a different color. <clears throat> selection handles. Again, those little handles like on our walls and stuff, they won't turn on for me at the moment. But display wall handles, you can turn those on or off. And you can also change the color of those if you want to. Oops. Hit cancel. And you turn on compact handles from here. We're just going to go play with our line color a little bit and our background color. We're going to hit OK. Here we got blue lines with a green background. I don't know if you want to stare at that all day. It'd burn my retinas out after too long. <clears throat> so we'll go back and change that back. Line color is gray. Uh, reset. Okay. Oh, reset button. That one works well, doesn't it? Line color to gray. And background color to white. There we go. And now our load save tab. Load save, we can uh, load our default settings. Um, that is, takes you back to the Pro Kitchen settings, the way you got it out of the box. We can load settings, or you can save your settings. So once you get everything all set up the way you want, you can hit your save settings, and you can have you know setting one, setting two, however you want to do it, and you can come back and swap them back and forth. I know when I was designing, I had contractors that like things to be very specific on their layouts. And they weren't necessarily the same from one contractor to the next. So I had a couple of my more picky contractors set up with um, uh, settings. And I would just go in and grab their setting. Everything would be changed automatically. And they were happy. I was happy. All was good. Here we are back to our regular settings. <clears throat> Almost. I guess I didn't turn it back on to show my base cabinets to do that. We will just go to display settings, load, save. Default settings, OK. Now everything's back the way it was. And just in a quick nutshell, that has been our settings and display settings. So use those, fine tune that to get it just the way you want it, and enjoy using it in Pro Kitchen.